so you can eat my poo, okay? You don't know what you're talking about. All right, let's resume. This is a real thing. This is not a video game. And I, I just don't take people seriously, particularly people who rely on irony. It's all ironic, bro. Well, what isn't ir ironic at, at some point? Is, is your declaration of, you know, uh, caring about demographics or being a quasi-racialist, is that actually irony? Is the, the Holocaust revisionist cookie, uh, um, what is it, cookie monster, oh, that was ironic? Or, or was that actually be you being serious? Uh, it's just, I cannot take people seriously. <laughs> This is laying out just like that scene in Joker. It's been playing out just like that. So you're telling me you think that killing those three young men was funny? I do. <laughs> and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Comedy is subjective, Murray. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, look. The... The irony thing is so critical. I don't know if I've ever explained this. And I don't know if I should even. But irony and post-irony is so critical for a variety of reasons. Number one, because my generation is completely nihilistic. I mean, that is really the backdrop of what we're talking about. All of it is contextual. Nobody gets that. Everything is contextual, okay? We're not doing this uh, in some free-form vacuum where whatever you know what i'm saying our generation my generation in particular is coming up where everything has been destroyed i mean we are living in the ruins of everything earnest everything sincere everything that actually had meaning religion ideology nationalism all of that it's all gone you know even the family we have nothing okay I came up in school, and it's like literally like a dystopian, like liberal Fukuyama wasteland where it's about holding hands and the diversification of America and all, you know, lab coat, feminist, all this shit. And so that being the backdrop of my generation, being ironic is sort of the language of this nihilistic era, I, I think, at least. You know, talking in a post-ironic, ironic way is very much symptomatic of that condition. You know, earnestness, sincerity, the sort of true belief, that, that doesn't exist for this generation. So I think irony is actually very important for communicating with young people. I think other young people understand that, you know, everything. We're sort of living in a cultural wasteland, too, of media, mass media, popular culture, you know, all of that is conducive to the kind of meme, ironic, humor, language that we use. It's why I'm such an effective communicator. You know, why do you think it is that young people watch my show as opposed to, you know, watching Fox News or even things like Ben Shapiro, or Stephen Crowder? It's because I'm speaking the language of other Zoomers. You know, if you're a young person online, whether it's the uh, image boards or forums or even things like Reddit or Twitter... I mean, this is the language of our generation. So it's very much a communication thing. But beyond that, irony is so important for giving a lot of like cover and plausible deniability for our views. That's what these people don't understand. These people are, this guy's literally 40 fucking years old. That's why he doesn't get it. He thinks that we're going to win if we just like give an earnest speech about, you know, Richard Spencer's the kind of person where if a journalist came up to him and asked him if he's a fascist, he would give some extremely academic, convoluted 20-minute answer, which was like a roundabout way of saying yes. He's the kind of person where when he talks about child pornography, he's going to say that, well, it can be useful to, to treat child rapists because he's a retard, you know, <laughs> earnestness, the sort of academic filibustering, obfuscating, this is not effective political communication, and especially not when you're a dissident, and especially not for young people. What is required is somebody who is tactical with their language. Tactical, okay? Use irony because, you know, when it comes to something like Holocaust revision, I mean, this is a subject that you cannot deviate from the popular consensus on. But you also, you also can't, like, I, I also think you really can't tell the truth if you adhere to that. 
So it's sort of like getting in the middle. It's being provocative. It's being, I I can't explain this in a very explicit way. You're going to have to just sort of uh, get what I'm saying here. When it comes to a lot of these issues, you need a little bit of maneuverability that irony gives you. Oh, well, you know, what does that mean? Well, I was being ironic. Well, I was joking. Well, it's whatever. Well, you don't understand the tone. Well, you don't understand humor. And that's true. And it is true to a great extent. You know, if you sat me down, uh, you know, with a fucking lie detector and asked me to go through all my views completely earnestly and sincerely, I'd probably come across a lot more moderate than you would imagine. But irony is a very important like linguistic and rhetorical weapon so that we can be subversive. And that is what they don't understand. We are dissonance. And as dissonance, they want to crush our ideas, our modes of communication, our organizing, our networking. That is why we must subvert those rules. We must be tactical. (laughs) This is what, when I was getting red pilled on like Islam, when I was like 15 in high school and I read It Is Islam by Glenn Beck, they taught us a little something about the principle of taqiyya. Does anybody remember that from the Fox News days? They can lie about their religion. You know, I remember that. That was a big red pill about like Muslim invasion back in the day. And that, I mean, that's more, I mean, it's not like we're lying, but more or less we have to omit certain things or be strategic about certain things because the world isn't ready for it. The people are not ready for it. Conservatives, boomers are not ready for it. And so irony is a way where we can sort of pace and lead and sort of tailor our communication to the required audience. You know, that's why on a gaming stream, I can say, oh, I'm blowing up Iranian cultural heritage sites. Everybody knows that's ironic when I'm doing the show. I'm not going to say that when I'm giving a speech to like boomers at a church in Iowa. So they just don't understand communication. They don't understand rhetoric. This is why nobody watches JF, okay? Nobody watches JF because it's not entertaining. It's not funny. It's not, it, it, like, it's literally just not interesting. And I don't, I don't, like, hate the guy. I really don't have a problem with him. He's attacked me before. I'm not, why? Because I've defended him and he attacks me. So I think that's uncalled for. But, um, like, I don't hate the guy, but nobody watches his show anymore. And he's scratching his head wondering why. And he's getting pissed off. I see it. You know, he used to have a really big show after he left Worski. He had a huge show, bigger than mine. And a year later, he can't get like 5,000 views. Why? The show fucking sucks. Not interesting. It's not funny. You know, and it, it takes a little bit of, it, you know, to be interesting, you do have to be challenging and a little bit different and fresh and maybe a little abrasive. And that's why people watch my show. And not, you know, not always to, I don't mean to like whip it out about numbers or anything, but you know, it's it's just a question of how do you be an effective communicator? And these are people who have, like, honestly been failing for years, taken strong leads and blown them. And they're, oh, this Nick guy, I can't take him seriously. Oh, like coming from who? Richard fucking Spencer? He would know a lot about not being taken seriously, right? So anyway. They go and they speak. Uh, they'll tell jokes or speak in a certain way to appeal to this audience. And then they'll pretend whenever they're held to account for something, they'll say they'll pretend that it was it was just all irony, bro. Um, There's no way to differentiate uh, between the irony and the serious statements. We all tell jokes. I've told plenty of jokes on your. No, you don't. This guy does not tell jokes. And if he does, they're not funny. Okay, that's the difference. Program. Everyone knows when I'm telling a joke. I'm clearly have a, you know, wink. Uh, It's clearly absurd. Uh, I don't basically express geopolitical opinions and then just say, oh, it's all a joke, brah. Uh, so I- <laughs> it's all a joke, brah. <laughs> These people are so dated. <laughs> it's all. I don't do that either. I use sardonic humor to convey a point subversively. I have never, you know, well, I do actually literally on my show say, just kidding, that's a joke, whatever. But the point is made. But the point is delivered. And I will also add, you know, they throw this uh, cat boy picture here. You know, when, <laughs> I don't know if I want to get into this, but, you know, the reason why I have been, people ask me, why don't you just disavow this guy? Why don't you just disavow? Why would he ever be on a stream with somebody like this? You know, this guy lolly sucks. A lot of the stuff he does is degenerate, and I don't agree with it. And I told them that on the stream for what it's worth. I told them, you know, what you're doing is gross and whatever, blah, blah, blah. I told them that privately too, okay? So 
I don't approve of everything he's ever done. But you have to see the value in like memes in viral content people say oh well, it's all just ironic that he dresses up like a cat boy he's dressing up in an anime costume like yeah and i don't expect people to get it if it's like you know people type it out and they write like you know guy who sucked on a dildo based like okay well when you put it like that it doesn't work but when you see this guy running through a mall with joker paint on saying 13 percent of the population does 50 percent of the crime and it goes viral well then you get it and when he goes to an anime convention and asks them about uh, bestiality, he goes to a furry, uh, you know, what, what is, I think he went to a furry convention, and he goes up and asks them if they support bestiality, and it goes viral on Reddit, well, well, then it starts to make sense. And, you know, again, it's not like I'm defending degenerate things. I don't defend. I hate degeneracy. I disavow that, you know, have you watched my show lately or ever? But the point is, and this is this is where that disconnect happens, it's like, do you understand how the internet operates or are you still like a Gen X retard? Are you still like a boomer faggot who thinks like everything is literal, everything is sincere, everything is as it seems, you know, what should we be doing? Should we all be wearing cow, excuse me, should we do the Chad Prather show and all be wearing cowboy hats and, you know, drinking whiskey and talking about the left and whatever? I mean, it's like, Dumb and retarded. So, anyway, so point. So point being, you know, I the, that is it, it's become a sticking point. But you know, just like many other things, which people did not trust me on, eventually people will get it. People laughed at me when I talked about optics. People laughed at me when I talked about no e girls for real. Do you remember the thought wars? The no e girls thing came out of the thought wars. There was a serious conflict in the movement about whether or not to allow e-girls and and people fucking laughed at me and they made fun of me and you know harassed me about it much of the same way that people have been doing about this and who is right after how many years and how many examples of e-girls being you know idiots and subversive and evil and whatever and same with optics costumed retards are extinct now because of you know frankly mostly because of me and also because of like ricky vaughn and a lot of other people but you get the picture and this is not obviously, and I don't want to die on the hill of like defending some like, f you know, freakish weirdo who, you know, frankly, it's, it's actually been a lot more trouble than it's worth at this point. But, but the point stands about, you know, I talked to the folk salad guys. I talked to this guy. I talked to a lot of people. And the point is to spread our ideas using a lot of different methods, a lot of different styles, a lot of different themes. You know, I, I could think of a lot of examples of somebody like Brittany Venti. You know, I don't love everything that Brittany Venti is about, but if she's spreading our ideas, I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I went on her stream. Did people give me shit about that for a long time? Did they pull up everything she ever did and say, oh, Brittany Venti's going to save the movement, right, Nick? How's Brittany Venti doing? Well, people did do that a little bit, but it wasn't as big of a deal. But I went on her stream because it's good to cultivate relationships with people who can spread the message in a different capacity. That's not just straight politics like I do on my show. And so that that is the broad point. That is the broader point. You know, I talked to BG Cumby, you know, Cumby, whatever. He does a lot of goofy shit. Uh, but, you know, if we can sort of get in other universes, that is a good thing. Anyway, anyway. I think I think I've established the point generally. Diversify your tactics, yeah, that's a big part of it. So you know, I'm responsible for what I do. If I, like, and I would get it if, like, well, anyway. Well, I'll, I'll continue to watch this clip. I'm sure I'll get an opportunity to explain that later it just, on. It's just fundamentally unserious. In terms of the Catboy stuff, uh, you know, one of the scenes I saw was uh, Nick saying, well, you've just got to trust the plan. You look like a clown if you're not trusting the plan. Facts. What is this plan? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know, bitch? It's 